Hey, hey, lovelies, welcome back to another video. It's your girl Katrina, and today I'm gonna show you how I made this awesome three split peekaboo glitter marble tumbler. Yes, I did that. This is a jam packed step by step tutorial. So if you wanna see how I did it, stay tuned. Let's get into the video. lightly sanded stainless steel tumbler and I am going to spray paint it. I don't always sand my tumblers because the spray paint I use really sticks and adheres to it really well. It's a paint and primer, but I just gave it a light sanding. This is going to be three sections. I've seen this tumbler, this style of tumbler from um, other YouTubers and this is going to be my first time doing this style. So I need to create three sections. And this is going to be my bottom section. So you just want to take something for the height that you want and you want to mark your tumbler. So I'm just using my little cup turning display thingamajiggy and I'm just going to turn it so that way I can get an even line. I hope it's dark enough. I should have used a marker, but I should be able to see it. So yeah, I can see my line all the way around. That's gonna be my bottom section. So I'm gonna tape that off and I'm gonna spray paint the top. But then once it dries, I'm gonna come back in because I need to do a middle section. So I have my little bling cases. I'm trying to see, is this higher? This might be higher for my bottom section because I do want a little bit more at the bottom. Then if I came in here for that, so I think that might be better. Okay, so I'm going to use this for the height for the bottom, actually, just to give a little bit more dimension at the bottom. So let's see how that does. So you just want to rotate the tumbler to give an even line. And that's perfect. So now I have two lines if I wanted it. So now I'm going to go ahead and add the third one just because I want to see where it's going to put me at for this line. And I think that's good. I feel like that's good. It'll give me all this space to decorate and this will be the middle part for my chunky glitter. My middle section is going to be, so my bottom section, I'm going to have like, you know, a marble effect going on. And then I'm going to have my chunky glitter in the middle. And then I'm going to do a nice peekaboo design up at the top. I want to make sure I have enough space for this middle section. So I'm just going to give it just a little bit more height. And now I'm going to turn. You got to find whatever you got to use, whatever you can. And if I feel like I need a little bit more height, then I'll come back in. And I'm just literally going to tape where the line is. Doesn't have to be perfect. Because I will have to draw the line again. I just wanted to do it in the beginning just so I could see my height. Okay. So I have that taped off. And of course, I'm going to cover the bottom. And I'm just going to spray paint this all one color. And I'll be back. I'm just going to take this off. And 
Now I'm gonna cover this part and spray paint the bottom black. I am going to now take the same piece of tape, turn it the other way, and I'm going to tape this direction. And I'm just going to seal that bottom, make sure that's nice and tight. Now I'm gonna take some saran wrap and cover all the rest. This is a little trick that you can do because we don't wanna get spray paint on the rest of this. So I'm just covering this part and this will hold it in place and protect the rest of the spray paint. So you see that? So now I'm gonna spray paint all this black and I'll be right back. Okay, so this is dry. I went in, did the bottom. I'm gonna unwrap this. And I had to, I had to actually paint it twice because I had got a little bit of the purple. Well, I got a little bit of the lavender on the black. Didn't really matter, but I just went ahead and did it again. So that's how you do the saran wrap. Now I'm going to go ahead and leave this here and epoxy this and do the glitter and then do the bottom because this is going to be my middle part so i'm just going to take another piece of tape and now i'm just going to tape again on the inside of this and i'll be doing the middle section last and you just want that tape to meet so now i have this on the top and I have my middle section. So now I'm going to go and get ready to epoxy and add my glitter. And I'm gonna be using these colors that I got from Peachy, Peachy Olive Glitters for the very first time. I'm really excited to see how it looks. So I can't wait to use these. And I'm gonna show you what they look like. So I have 10 mLs of my epoxy resin. I'm gonna mix this for about four to five minutes. And I switched my resin. I was buying my resin off of Etsy, but now I switched it to Magic Resin. And I got it off of Amazon. It's a little bit more um, pricey, of course, but I think it works much better. I like it a lot better. The other one seemed to be, you know, cloudy no matter how long I mixed it, but this one seems to work so much better. Normally I sit my container of epoxy in warm water beforehand before I pour it and mix it. That's like a little trick that you can do to help reduce the bubbles, but I didn't do it this time because I'm rushing. But you just want to mix well, stir well, get all the sides, make sure you scrape the bottom for a good three to five minutes. I'm just going to heat my tumbler up just a little bit so the epoxy will spread better. And it looks as if my tumbler is a little crooked, so I'm going to make sure that's on straight. And I'm just going to take a little bit and just spread that out a really thin layer all across because I want my glitter to lay flat. This is the first, first layer. This is just the first coating. Again, this is a 20 ounce, so it's not really a big surface area. Fast and easy. I'm just gonna hit it once again. I'm gonna use this really nice lavender purple color. This is for my cousin for her birthday. She likes 
black but a little bit of purple and you can kind of see it right there i'm just placing a paper plate underneath to catch it you don't want to put the paper plate down while you're doing the epoxy in case the epoxy drips now normally i have my glitter in the shaker but i did not get a chance to put these in a shaker yet so i don't want to lose my glitter I'm trying to be careful because I see that it is blowing everywhere. I could have did it by hand off the turner. This color is so pretty. So I have all of these acrylic paints that I just got by Apple Barrel and I'm going to mix them just so I can make like a marble effect. I'm using the I'm using the purple iris and matte. I'm going to use of course the lavender. This is the matte one as well. And this one is a uh, purple but it's like a glitter. It's um it's a glitter finish. So I'm going to definitely try this one out. And this one says, um, it's a dragonfly glaze. I've never used this one, so I'm curious to see how this one comes out. So my epoxy is still good. I'm just going to take a little bit of this epoxy, spread it out on the bottom. Hoping I have enough. Can't forget the bottom. So I'm just going to put this, I know some people mix it in the epoxy, but I wanna see what colors I'm working with. This one is, oh, that's like a white. Okay, so I'm just gonna take this and just like, Lines. So I'm adding these colors one by one, stroke by stroke, trying to make it look like something, making little curly curls, making little swoopy swoops, little loop de loops, and trying to come up with this marble pattern. Listen, y'all, I literally had no idea how to do this, but I've seen it done, so I said, I know I can do it. But the more colors I'm applying, I'm like, hold up. This is looking like a two-year-old painted all over my tumbler, and that's not the look I'm going for. So certain spots, it was too much lavender. Other spots, it was too much purple. So I had to go back in, fill it in with some black, add a little bit more zigzags, a little more swirls. And I'm like, okay, we're getting somewhere. Definitely don't forget your bottom. You got to do the same thing on the sides to your bottom. So I'm like, all right, now it's looking like something. Then I come back in and finish it off with a little chunky glitter here and there. And look at that. I like the way it came out. Hit it with the heat gun and bam. I'm just going to take a small piece of parchment paper and I'm going to mash down to make sure this will help with less sanding. Just make sure that glitter is all, even though this isn't the real chunky, this is like medium chunky and fine. I just want to make sure it's all laid down. So I'm going to let that turn and spin in about 20 minutes. Can't forget this step. In about 20 minutes, I'm going to come back and peel this tape off so that way I can have nice, crisp lines. I thought I was actually recording when I pulled off the tape, but I did not hit record. I think I hit stop instead. But as you see, I pulled off the tape from in the middle. And even though the lines are the lines are somewhat clean, just have like a little bit of spillage over when I pulled off the tape, but that's going to be perfectly fine because I'm going to be filling that middle in with the chunky glitter 
and then I'll be putting borders around it. So I'm gonna let this turn for about six to eight hours and then I will come back and do the middle part. I'm so excited. This is my first time doing this type of tumbler and so far I'm loving it. Stay tuned. So I definitely should have did my middle section first because this is still a little bit, you know, sticky. It's not fully dry, but I have to complete this tumbler in three days and I still have to do my peekaboo part. So I am going to, now I could have applied Mod Podge in the middle, but um, I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the epoxy because I just like the way the epoxy works better with glitter. And this is the chunky glitter. So I wanna make sure I don't have any gaps, any holes. So I'm just gonna mix this. This is just five mLs just for this little space that way i can get my middle part in that way that can turn all night and then i can come and recoat it in the morning okay so i'm going to try to be really careful and just get this middle section done <laughs> even need that. Look how much I have left. I'm going to now put this plate down here so I can catch the rest of it. And I'm just going to just give this a small little zap. I'm going to be using this Merbabe. Merbabe. Really nice colors. So I'm gonna take my time and I'm actually going to use this parchment paper to kind of, I wish I had my sprinkler, but I don't. This seems to be more bluish than purple. And this does not clash so I think I might go back and like sprinkle some of the purple in there because as you see it's not really a lot of purple and I thought it was going to be so I think I'm gonna go back and put some more of this purple you know, just in there to fill it in. Because my cousin really wants, you know, the purple. So I think that looks really nice. This is going to be black at the top. So just keep watching. It's not done yet. We working in layers here. We working in layers. So I'm just going to pat that in. Definitely want to make sure the chunky glitter is laid as flat as possible. For less sanding. I'm going to make sure that's all laid down. So I'm going to let this turn all night. Then I'm going to come back tomorrow, do another coat full of epoxy, then apply the decals and then take it from there. So it's the next morning and I'm loving the way this has turned out. I have my epoxy sitting in my water, warming up. Let me just show you what that looks like. This is all I do. I just sit the whole jug in some warm water. And this just helps to decrease the air bubbles. And I'm mixing up 20 mLs because I wanna do a flood coat a good four to five minutes. Taking my heat gun. I'm going to heat this tumbler up. So that epoxy can lay nice and smooth. And if there was any glitter that just happened to still be loose, 
that blows it off. See these colors up close. second coat of epoxy so I'm gonna let that turn for a full eight hours and then it should be good enough to sand so I'm gonna stop this now this has turned for a full eight hours um, last night as you can see so it still has some spots where you know the epoxy sinks in to the glitter but um, it's actually smoother than what I thought but I do need to definitely sand it there are some edges and I definitely need to get this side sanded really good up at the top sand and smooth out the bottom so I'm just going to take my sanding block and I'm going to sand this down um, get it as smooth as you can because you definitely do not want to apply any decals on it while it is rough so as I run my fingers along it you can I can definitely feel some of the glitter peeking through so I'm going to sand that down as smooth as possible because once I put the spray paint on this top area, I definitely do not want to sand afterwards. And I'm just using my sanding block and, and then I'll come in and I'll finish it up with this 100, 180 grit sandpaper. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. And I'm going to actually sand it off camera because I'm going to take it in my garage and it is really cold. So I'm going to do this really quick so I don't have to set up any cameras or anything. So I'm just weeding out all these little butterflies. Putting it in here. Some of it is so small, the detail. So this is very time consuming. You definitely have to be patient and be careful when you're weeding out these little small intricate details. Of course, I had no idea these butterflies were going to be such a hassle and I didn't weed them all out because I did not want to weed so many and didn't use them. So I only tried to weed as many as I thought I was going to need. But I'm using this little nail polish holder that's like a little hack that you can easily put the weed in. Now I'm just weeding out the names and I'm going to apply these decals. So now this is my tumbler. I went and sanded it already as I showed you previously what I use. I'm just going to go ahead and wipe it off again. I'm going to use some alcohol and I'm just going to give it another clean wipe. Wiping that down because I'm getting ready to place the decals on. Already cleaned it off but just showing you how I wipe it down with alcohol. Once you put the epoxy on it again, of course, all the sand marks, everything will completely disappear. You don't wanna use a paper towel when you do this because you don't want those little fuzzies in it. So now I'm just gonna go ahead and apply the name first. So I'm just gonna use my masking tape that I got from Brilliant Vinyl. I have different masking tapes, but this one seems to be really sticky. 
So I'm just going to cut that down to size. Okay. And I didn't want the name too big, but I didn't want it too small either. So I'm just going to take that. I'm going to make sure everything is down. Make sure everything picks up. Doesn't really matter because everything is going to be even, but I'm gonna place it pretty much in the center, but I'm gonna turn it around to me just because I'm gonna make sure it's straight. The other masking tape that I have actually has lines on it. So I'm just gonna place that just like that. You wanna make sure that your tumbler is straight and is smooth when you do this part. Cause I will be coming back to peel this off. Okay, so I want to make sure that that is laid down nicely. So now I'm going to turn it over. And what I'm actually going to do, a trick that you can do, I've seen someone else do this. I'm going to put the lid on it. When I put the lid on it, that gives me an actual marking of the center on both sides. So now I should have did it in the beginning before I did the name. But now I'm just going to lay... Now I'm gonna center this with the name. So that gives me my center point, and now I'm going to use this for my center point for the back. Okay, so I'm going to stick this down and transfer this. I need everything to come off perfectly and seamlessly. Sometimes these little dots be the hardest. Okay, so I'm gonna line that up. I am gonna use like a little ruler just for spacing. I don't know if that's gonna help too much. Okay. And I'm just going to apply that down on the tumbler. And just lift and peel that back. It's down. Now we're just going to go ahead and start sporadically placing these nice little butterflies. And by the way, if you're wondering, I'm using the StarCraft HD Glossy Permanent Vinyl. This stuff is amazing. In my opinion, it cuts and weeds way better than Oracle 651. And I got it from BrilliantVinyl.com. Okay, so those are the top decals. So I'm gonna go ahead and cover this and I'm gonna spray paint this. After I do the spray paint, then I'll do the borders. So now I'm just gonna tape off the bottom part and cover that up because I definitely do not wanna get any spray paint on this section at all. So I'm gonna make sure I tape and seal this off really well. So I'm taping that off. I'm gonna add saran wrap to the bottom and make sure nothing gets through, only spray painting this part. I'm also gonna spray, also going to put tape on the inside because I don't want any spray paint to get on the inside of the tumbler as well.
So now we're gonna go add saran wrap to the bottom and spray paint this whole top part. Okay, so I have my saran wrap on here. I added an extra layer just to protect that because I don't want anything getting on the bottom and I'm going to go ahead and spray paint this whole top part black. It is freezing, so I'm gonna try to do this as quickly as possible. Okay, so we're gonna spray paint this black. I'm gonna get a nice, good coat because I only wanna do this once. So this has dried for about two hours with the spray paint. I'm going to remove this. I'm going to take off the tape and I'm going to remove all of the decals. First, I'm looking for a perfectly clean edge. So let's see how that did. This was not affected. No spray paint got on that, which is perfect. Okay, I'm going to remove this. I am happy. I have a perfect black line all the way around. So let's get an up close look as we remove the decals. So when it comes to removing the decals from underneath the spray paint, you definitely don't want to take too long. You don't want the paint to dry and it hardens. So I took about two hours. Now this is sped up about 10 times. So I definitely took my time. I'm using my weeding tool. It comes right up. So you definitely want to have a little patience, especially if you have small intricate details like these butterflies. But it pays off and it looks great in the end and you have a great peekaboo underneath. So that's... how that looks so far. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply the borders right around here. And I just cut out these little strips. I'm just gonna add these little strips, these borders, and of course I'm going to put something in between it to make it pop more. So I'm just using this, picking this as my midpoint. And you just want to pull it tight. All the way around. And I'm just making sure that it's sealed by using my finger to run along, to run along with it. And you just want to make sure it lines up perfectly So I'm just gonna lift this one just a little bit. And that should be good. I'm just gonna clip off this end. And I'm now just going to clip, clip that part. I'm gonna do the same thing to the bottom. I had a section right here that I definitely wanted to make sure that I covered up because some of the chunky glitter did fall into the bottom. Again, I'm just using my finger to run along and pull it nice and nice and tight. And I'm going to meet overlap the other side. Got a little bit of spray paint on my fingers. I don't want too much to go over, so I'm just gonna cut a little bit more. Okay, perfect, just like that. And now let's see what color we're gonna put on the inside. So I'm gonna use this nice holographic glitter vinyl to put right on the border. And I think this will look really nice. It's like this glitter rainbow. 
and it's a, you know the base color is silver but it's by tech wrap craft i have them in so many different colors i've used them and shown them before on my channel so i'm definitely going to use this and i'm going to see how well it looks because there's a little bit of silver in here so i definitely want to make it pop but i want to you know separate the borders so let's see how well this looks on the inside okay so i just cut this thin strip i'm just going to put this right in the middle make sure i get it centered And I'm going to turn it. And I'm going to make that meet right in the middle, just like that. Okay, that's that one. And I'm going to do the second one. So those are the bands that I put on. So now I'm gonna go ahead and apply another layer of epoxy. So I have 30 mLs, and I'm gonna just use some of this crystal glitter to put in here to make it sparkle even more, just because we need more sparkle. And I'm gonna mix that in. I think my cup runneth over, because we want the epoxy to really sparkle so I just want to make sure I have enough crystals in here to make this really pop just a little bit so because this is thick it's not going to spill out unless I spill it out Okay, that should do it. Look at the sparkles in the black. That came out so nice. The ring light is reflecting it a little bit, but now I'm gonna let this turn for a full eight hours. So I wanted you guys to see, this is how it looks when you sand it. This is my final sanding, and I'm getting ready to just rinse it off, wipe it down with alcohol, but I just sanded it one last time, try to get it as smooth as possible. The last time I sanded it, I actually scraped off a little bit too much um, and went down to the black. And then, of course, I couldn't see the glitter. So I had to put a little bit more, sprinkle a little bit more glitter at the top. So, of course, now I have to re-sand. Now I'm hoping I can get it perfectly because sometimes you get these little indents. If I don't know if you can kind of see it with the glitter, the epoxy sinks in or spreads out, doesn't really cover it all that well so sometimes that happens so now i'm going to do a really thick flood coat to make sure i get this all covered nice and smooth as you can see over here i have my epoxy warming up in water i normally do that when i want to get my epoxy nice and warm to spread better so i'll switch that out so i'm just going to go rinse this off and i'll my last sanding all i did was just use this which one which one is this this is 180 grit and i just sanded it down Make sure you do wear a mask as well because you are sanding in the epoxy. Even though the epoxy has been sitting here, it's still sanding epoxy. So you just need to make sure you're being safe at all times. As you see, I have on my gloves. I'm not touching it. So I'm getting ready now to go rinse this off and then wipe it down with alcohol. And we're going to do our last layer of epoxy. I don't like using paper towels at all because you can see those little paper towel fuzzies. And you don't want that on the tumbler. So I always wipe it down with the cloth to make sure nothing gets left behind. So I'm just using my alcohol. 
And of course you will see those sand marks come back until you pour that epoxy on it. But I'm loving the way this looks so far. But we now just wanna finish this off and make this complete. All right, and I'm gonna put it back on my turner. I had to make a little makeshift desk. I threw out my old one that I was laying on because again, I am moving. So I had to use a huge box and put like some cardboard down. And again, I'm using magic resin that I got off of Amazon. As you see, it gets clearer and clearer. You do not want to mix too fast. Okay, I'm in the home stretch, and this is my final layer of epoxy. These tumblers definitely take time and patience, but it is so worth it. These peekaboo glitter marble split tumblers are just amazing. So I hope you have enjoyed this video and tutorial so far. Let's go ahead and add this final layer of epoxy, smooth it on out, and hit it with the heat gun. give a big thanks and shout out to today's sponsor Skillshare an online learning community for creatives like myself where thousands and thousands of entrepreneurs come to learn a new hobby learn new skills or just level up the business you already have they have so many classes ranging from marketing editing cooking sewing animation photography business tips productivity and things to help you learn with social media so as you all know, I started an Etsy series on my channel where I taught you how to open up your shop, but I came across Tiffany's class here on Skillshare. She's a seven-figure Etsy seller, and she teaches you how to launch and start your own Etsy shop as a full-time professional seller. She gives away all the tips and tricks and talks about engagements, everything you need to know. So I definitely recommend her class if you're interested in starting your own Etsy shop. Now my girl Lily Singh, her course is amazing. I'm taking her course and I'm loving it. First of all, I just love her personality, but she has a course on the power of storytelling. If you are anything like me and you create content around your business, around marketing, around social media, the power of storytelling is so convincing that it drives people to follow you, it motivates people to purchase from you, and it just keeps people coming back. So she gives tips and tricks on how to help you with your social media from YouTube, TikTok, everything, creating, branding, all the way down from shooting and marketing. So this will definitely help you if you are trying to get your brand out there, if you're just trying to create powerful content and you want a story to tell and you need to know how to tell it. So I recommend these courses because Skillshare is just a way to level up anything you are trying to do. If you're interested in any of these courses that I mentioned, but they have thousands of others to choose from, or if you're interested in leveling up your business, and learning new skills, Skillshare is the place to do it. They're offering the first 1,000 of my viewers who click the link down below all access your first month free to try it out any course that you like. Once again, the first 1,000 of my viewers who click the link down below will get your first month free to try out any course you like. Thank you, Skillshare, for sponsoring today's video. So this is done. All I'm gonna do now is just clean out the inside. And I'm going to get all that extra epoxy off. So I just take my X-Acto knife and I just scrape the sides to get a nice clean finish. So there's just a little bit of epoxy that fell. So I'm just gonna get that out. Trying not to cut or scrape the stainless steel. This is how I do it. And I just take it right on out. So I'm gonna go and do this really fast and get this out. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. See, I just get it right out and it comes right out just like that. I try my best to tape off, but my last time I didn't tape it off only because I'm gonna make sure I get that seal all the way up nice and close to make sure this epoxy is sealed in. And sometimes the tape gets in the way of that. 
So now I have a nice, smooth, clean finish. And I don't mind not putting the tape on all the time because I try to come in nice and thin and then the X-Acto knife always gets it out. One last little piece. I'm trying not to cut myself either. I'm just gonna take alcohol. Clean up that rim, clean up the inside. And then I'll take a nice fine sand grit paper and just sand and smooth the top. And this is done. I'm just gonna take a small piece. I'm just sanding the top just to smooth it out. This has sat and dried for a good three days. So this epoxy is fully cured. I love, 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 love the way this came out. This is done. I am finally done and I must say I love the way this tumbler turned out. Took me a lot of work so I really hope my cousin loves her birthday tumbler. This is how I did my 20 ounce split peekaboo chunky glitter marble tumbler. It's a mouthful to say but it turned out the bomb. I hope you guys loved and enjoyed this tutorial and if you did you already know what to do. Smash the like button for your girl. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and don't forget to turn on those notification bells. I will be adding this design to my Etsy shop if anyone is interested in purchasing but if you're thinking about doing this design let me know in the comments down below or if you've done it i would love to hear your thoughts and your designs as always i will see you in the next video